Hi, everybody. My name is Angelique. For those of you who do not know me, I am the shoe chick. And um, when you paint with me, kids in Africa get shoes. So um, there's a bigger story behind that, but we're going to leave it at that for now. Okay, so I hope you have your music. I got in trouble, a lot of trouble last time. They pulled down my video because I was pay playing all this music. Somebody gave me the wrong information. So we're not really going to have any music today, but it's okay. Because if you know me, you know that I don't know what um, awkward silence is. So I'm sure I can fill up the time as we paint. Um, so I want to make sure you have your music right because that's really important when you're painting. For me, it's my absolute favorite thing to do is to have music and wine and a great idea. So um, the wine I'm drinking today, which I'm not getting paid for this, so I, but I just want to share it with you. I posted it earlier. Earlier, it's called Buttercup, and I'm a big, big Chardonnay fan. And this one on the front of it says barrel fer barrel fermentation, which is important to me because I like the oaky um, finish on my wine. Um, this was the first time I had it today, and I like I like it better than last week's wine. It's only ten bucks. I try to keep my wine around the 20, 10 to twenty dollar range, and this one is a great value. I got it at, um, even though I said great, what value? It was at Walmart. I got it at Smith's. So, buttercup, anything with butter on it is good, right? I really like this wine. Um, okay, so what are you drinking? <laughs> I try to get the conversation in a little bit because I know that um, once you get painting. You're not going to want to talk. And then I end up talking to myself. So I'm going to engage you a little bit at this point. So make sure you have your water cup like halfway full or half empty. No, it's half full, right? <laughs> half full of water. And um, we're going to get into the painting. I don't want to keep, I'm going to babble along as we complete different steps. So um, this is the tree of life. This is what we're painting today. Huge significance to this painting. Um, but I'll get into that later. So this is the blank canvas, 16 by 20, just like you have. I have the exact same tools that you have are what I'm using today. I'm all up in the camera. I want to be back because I want you to see the canvas a little bit more, a little bit better. Okay. So the first step we're going to do, um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time, but I'm going to go over the tools you have while you guys are putting a coat of water on, but I'm going to actually go a step at a time. Your easel, you got the easel in your kit. Please make sure you have these um, ears, I'll call them ears, extended, your little bunny ears extended, um, because they'll poke in the back of the canvas and they'll like make a little mark in the back and you don't want that. So make sure they're fully extended. Make sure this back is fully extended so when you're painting it doesn't fall over, okay? So everybody got an easel that needed one, which was really cool. And I need my easels back. Probably Monday I'll be here from nine to five. You guys can drop them off or you can buy them for just 10 bucks each if you plan on painting with me all the time. So um, one of the other tools that we have in there, oh, in your little packet that you got was your apron. We're painting with acrylic paints today. Very, wash very easily off your skin, not so easily off of your clothes. And the apron fully opens up and goes over your head. You might have to put a little water on your fingertips to get it to open up a little bit, but it really does open. Okay, let me know. Help your neighbor, you might have to help your neighbor. I always tell my people that. But anyway, it fully opens up like this and goes over your head. Because I hate to get your clothes dirty. But everybody's been home all week. You're probably in your pajamas, right? So, um, or something super comfortable on this Saturday night. It was a beautiful day today. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reach into my bag of tools, and I'm going to grab the sponge brush. Now, I don't really like painting with a sponge brush. The only reason why you have a sponge brush is for coverage, because we couldn't do that with that little small blue handle brush that you have in your packet. Okay. So if you're going to be painting with me a lot, I recommend getting a big brush so that you can get the coverage that you need. So in our Tree of Life painting, um, in your packet, you got what we call in the art world a reference photo. That's for all you OCD people that are going to be just obsessed with making it look exactly like mine. That is not the objective. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that. But what I want you to do first is I want you to take that sponge brush and dip it in your water 
And don't totally uh, submerge it, about halfway. And I want you to put a light coat of water on your canvas. And what we're doing is we're activating the canvas so it is ready to accept the paint. Now some people put, um, they paint the canvases white first or they paint it with gesso um, first. Um, but the important thing is that you get something on there um, that's kind of like a primer. It's, it's gonna uh, absorb in the canvas first. So when we lay that first layer of paint down, it's not gonna just get all sucked up in the canvas, okay? So just a very light coat of water. If you notice, I even did the sides of my canvas because we're gonna paint the sides of our canvas. If you've ever been in my studio, none of my paintings are framed, but they're wrapped. That means when you wrap them, you paint them on the side. So, light coat of water. It's very important that it's light. And because for us to go to the next step of painting the tree, well, actually chalking out the tree, the canvas has to be dry. So that's why I keep saying light, light coat of water. Don't make it drippy. If your canvas is drippy right now, you're gonna take that blue, very highly absorbent paper towel that's in your packet, and you're gonna lightly dab it a little bit. Any comments, Liza? Uh, Hesper says go slow. Go slow. Hester? Hester, oh. Okay. <laughs> go slow. Okay, well, this is light coat of water. So um, if you're dripping, you're gonna dab it off a little bit. And um, after that light coat of water, you got three paints. It only takes three colors to make this beautiful tree of life painting. I want you to take the lids off your paint. You're gonna keep them in the tray. You can probably put the lids back on these and they probably keep for quite a while if you wanna paint with them later. If you're finding that your paints are a little bit stiff or sticky, we're gonna add a little tiny bit of water onto our paintbrush, okay? So they should be good though. Most of y'all picked up today. <laughs> so. Um, they should be good. So I'm thinking that you probably should be done with that light coat of water on your canvas. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the background in your little, if you look at the reference photo, the background is kind of like a glowing moon in the background with the gray around it. We're gonna do that first. Then we're gonna chalk in the tree and then we're gonna paint the tree. And then we're gonna do all those fun little leaves. So um, somebody just put a really funny emoji, but I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see it. <laughs> Vanessa says, do you have Sunday classes? Do I have Sunday? Not yet, but you know what? We might do that. <laughs> um, some people have asked me to do some private things, like on Zoom, like if it's your birthday and you want to get your friends together and you don't want to make it public, can we go on Zoom? Of course we can. So I'm open to any ideas that you might have, okay? So I'm hoping you already have that um, canvas already wet. And what I'm gonna do is, in the corner of my little mixing tray right here, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna need this white paint, but I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint in my mixing tray. Just about that, you can't really tell because it's white on white, sorry about that. Probably, I don't know, a tablespoon? <laughs> and then I'm going to take my sponge brush. Now we're gonna make gray. Okay, and we're gonna use black in this white to make gray. Now, this is very important. Black is such a strong color. It is so strong, I can't even tell you how strong it is. I just want you to put a tiny, tiny bit of black on the corner of your paintbrush and we're gonna make gray. We can always make it uh, you know, lighter with more white, but I don't wanna waste our white paint because we gotta get through this whole painting, right? So I'm gonna take a little dip into my black paint, just with the corner, just a little tiny dip in there. Let's just uh, speak louder. A little tiny dip in there, and I'm mixing it around in here, and that little tiny dip made gray. Can you see that? Oh, you can't really see it because of the lights kind of funky, but you'll get it when you make it. Little tiny bit. Now, I want a little tiny, tiny bit more in mine. I don't know what yours is looking like, but just a little tiny, tiny bit more, and I'm gonna mix it up. It's better if you add a little tiny, tiny bit and a little tiny, tiny bit, because we can make it lighter on the canvas. So I'm gonna go with this gray right there. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this gray is I'm making that glow effect in the, in the middle, okay? So I'm gonna do a big circle. 
And I think everybody can do a circle. I'm doing that with this sponge brush, right? So I'm gonna do a big circle right in the middle of my canvas. Big circle. Now even making this big circle, I noticed like my paint is really kind of, it's kind of dark for what I'm doing, but it's okay. I'm gonna go around. I'm doing kind of half circles around here, half circles around here. You with me? It doesn't look like much, does it? It's gonna come together, I promise you. It always does. Any comments, Liza? Everybody okay? Everybody's working? So I'm letting the white of the canvas come through a little bit as part of my glow. And I'm working with the sponge brush. And then at the bottom, about four fingers up, about a third of the canvas, I'm gonna say, hmm, if I take four fingers, I'm gonna mark it off right here. How about five fingers? How about your whole hand? I got big hands, so five fingers. I'm gonna draw a line. You see what I'm doing there? And I'm gonna paint that whole bottom section solid gray. Can everybody see that? I'm gonna take it off my easel because from my angle, when I look at this Facebook, it doesn't seem like you can see it. So, like that. So if you look at your reference plate photo, you see where the roots are at the bottom? We need quite a bit of space. So I want you to think of your canvas being in thirds. So maybe your hand isn't enough. I want you to go all the way up. Maybe if you broke your canvas into thirds, one, we need to go up a little bit higher. I'm sorry about that. It takes quite a bit, because we got quite a bit going on at the bottom of our canvas, you know what I mean? So about a third of your canvas, I drew, I drew my line just a little bit higher. Because we got a lot going on with the roots and everything. So think of your canvas being broken down into thirds. One, two, three. So about a third of your canvas is going to be that solid color because that's where we need to put the roots at. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions, Liza? Mm -mm. Everybody's working. So about a third of the, from the, of the canvas is going to be solid gray. Almost didn't leave you enough room for the roots. I'm also painting the sides with that sponge brush. So, look at that. This is why we need the sponge brush, because we need all that coverage. Um, so, like I said, if you're going to be painting with me in the future, you might want to get like a bigger brush that you're going to use all over over and over again. But everything is disposable, of course. Everything is brand new that's in your kit. Um, and even the bag you can use to like lay down in front of your canvas so you don't mess up your table or anything. So it really is a party in a bag. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to work on this glow. I got this line going down at the bottom. I'm going to work on this glow a little bit. And I'm just curving my brush around that circle. Now you don't want it to look stripy. See how stripy it looks? It doesn't look like a glow, right? It doesn't. So what I'm gonna do to soften up those lines a little bit is that I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna add a little bit of white. So in my mixing tray here, I'm gonna put just a tad bit of white, just a little tiny bit of white because I still needed some white in there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my sponge brush and I'm going to blend like ladies like you're doing eyeshadow I'm going to paint I am painting right on top of those lines and look how I'm softening how they're softening up a little bit of water a little bit of white paint and they're actually softening up chef Jeff said learning so much oh <laughs> thanks so I'm softening up the lines just by adding a little bit of water, painting right on top of it. You don't want it to look stripy, okay? So it doesn't look like much right now. You need to soften up these lines in the middle too. So if you look at the reference painting, there is a little bit of gray dragged into that white protected space. So you don't have to protect it so much. 
you could drag a little bit of the um, gray paint in the middle. So again, I'm using all, I'm doing all this with the sponge brush right now. And I know it doesn't look like much, but this is the underpainting in the art world. That's what we call it, the underpainting. All the beautiful branches of the tree and all those beautiful leaves are going to cover everything else up, you know? So we just want to make sure we get that glowing effect happening. So how are you guys doing? I know I keep, I, I keep asking questions all the time and you guys are really working. So just have fun with it. There are no mistakes. Remember Bob, uh, Bob Ross says they're just happy little accidents. <laughs> so um, there really are no mistakes. This is going to be a tree. So um, there's going to be many, many different ways you could do a tree. No two trees are alike. If you obsess with getting every branch like my branches, it's going to be tough. So um, the objective, I always say that my paint parties are paint party 101. You're not going to learn perspective drawing. You're not going to learn uh, color theory, but you'll have a good time. And it's to introduce you to the paint party world, really. You know, so just kind of have fun with it. Don't stress out about it. Don't look at your neighbor's painting. If you're painting in a group, if you do look at your neighbor's painting, you can only say compliments, okay? Only nice, kind words, because we're all so vulnerable. I mean, like, look at me right now. I'm painting live. Anything could happen. <laughs> okay, so I got my glow looking okay. I'm kind of okay with it. Not a perfect circle going on, but it doesn't need to be a perfect circle. I'm pretty much... Um, I think done with my sponge brush. Um, there is a little bit of variance going on in this bottom part in the grass. If you really look at that reference photo, there's some light, there's some light gray and dark gray. I'm gonna take a tiny, tiny bit. Remember I told you black is like really, really so bold. I'm gonna take a lot, tiny, tiny bit of black on the corner of my sponge brush and I'm going to add a few highlights in the ground. Not a lot, just a little. And again, I don't want it to look too stripy, so I'm gonna go over it with that gray that I made for the background. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Black is just a hard color to work with. It's kind of hard to blend with because people always tend to put too much. So when you're working with it, just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay? We cool? At some point, you gotta call it good. Because for us to go to the next step, this actually has to dry. So as I'm looking at mine, I'm okay with it. I have a little bit of black on my paintbrush, my sponge brush still, and I'm just gonna drag a little bit of darker um, gray in my glow here. But as I said before, at some point, you gotta call it good. So you can leave your white to show through like that as being um, the white in your painting, or you could actually paint it white as well. I'm going to leave mine white. I'm going to add a little bit of um, paint to it later, but I'm just going to let the canvas be the white in my moon there. Okay, we good? So it has to dry and um, acrylic paints, they dry very quickly. Um, one trick you can use if you have a blow dryer at home and you're painting uh, and you're working on painting, you can just take a blow dryer and blow it dry. Um, you could fan it with your mixing tray. You could blow on it, <laughs> but it really does dry um, very quickly. So I'm gonna wait for you all to um, finish with the glow. Um, and like I said, at some point, you gotta call it good. So while you're working on that, I'm gonna do some shout outs because that's one of my favorite things to do. I had so many people return to paint with me this time and that is like the best like compliment ever. So I wanna tell you, I really started doing these virtual paint parties for totally selfish reasons. I did them because I had to pay my rent in my studio and all my parties canceled um, as soon as we got the 30, first 30 day quarantine, everything in my books just canceled. And I had to think, and for you business people out there, business folks, I just had to pivot as they say. And I've always wanted to try my hand at the virtual paint party game. So um, 
it was a perfect opportunity to do that. So I want to thank you all for supporting me. Like so many people came back to paint with me this time. You know, it just made me so happy. I wanted to get 100 people on. We got 35 right now. So I'm sure some other people will be joining us later. So, and share this, share it with some peeps. Okay, so just a quick few shout outs for you folks joining me today. I want to say hi to Erica, Leandra, uh, Sistine, and her one friend, I don't know who that is, Queen, uh, Quinn, Hester, thank you, Donna, thank you, Denise, Kathy, um, Maritza, uh, Navi, and your whole family that is joining me today. Navi got like seven kits, so thank you for joining me today. Um, Kayla, Tracy Young, Dawn and Denise, you guys have been so cool and been painting with me all the time. Um, and while I'm reading these, I hope you're finishing your glow, like, and you've done, you're leaving it alone so it can dry. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, Warlicia, girl, thank you. That's all I can say. You've always uh, supported me in everything, and I appreciate you. Tamara, or uh, Tamara, Karen, um, Ernestine, and your crew. I don't know who you picked up for. I'm assuming it was Janice and, and uh, Naisha. So um, thank you, ladies. You guys have been with me a long time. I appreciate you. Sharon, Crystal, um, thanks for painting with me again. Lisa G, thanks for painting me, with me again. Natalie and Sharon, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and um, wow, I didn't put your name on it. Katrika Ormond, your whole family is painting with me um, from the Acute Care family. Um, last time she did it with her business, this time she's doing it with her family. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so I hope your painting is dry. Look, that was a poor example. I've just been painting and stuff all day. I got paid off. But it is dry. You can tell if it's dry because you can just look at it and tell. Or you can look at it at an angle and you'll see all the wet spots in there. Um, Shalina says, you are great. I love this. It's, it's time for me to relax and have fun. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You know, I got a lot of people, um, I don't want to call it fan mail, but just um, like gratitude emails, just thanking me for doing this. And I want you to know that you are helping me as much as I'm helping you. This fills up my spirit. I mean, it would have been very easy, and I had the thought to, when all this started going down, just to stay in bed and just, you know, watch, binge watch Netflix and all that. But I felt like, you know, I have a gift to share. And um, when people started thanking me and everything, I realized that it was a bigger thing than I thought. You know what I mean? So thank you for that. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for sharing them on my timeline. It really fills my spirit. Um, okay, so I have this piece of chalk right here. I want you to uh, draw a line, and it's going to be kind of hard to see, and I didn't really think about that, that we're doing white on gray. But you, you're going to draw a line directly down the middle of your canvas. Now, it is important. I said there are no mistakes, and there are no mistakes. But it's kind of important that the tree's in the middle, <laughs> that the trunk of the tree is in the middle. So I want you to draw that line like that. Then I want you to um, think of your canvas, canvas in terms of thirds. So we have the grass, and then we're going to draw another line, and we're breaking up the canvas in ter terms of thirds, right? So we have one third here, another third, and then this third, okay? There's three major parts to the painting. So if you look at your reference photo, all those branches in the, are in the first third. The second third is the trunk of the tree. And the final third is where we're going to have the heart and all the roots and stuff going on. I hope that makes sense. Um, so from, I wish we had a pencil instead of chalk, and I apologize for that. But um, from the first, the middle third, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the trunk of the tree. And I hope that makes sense to you. So you can actually take your chalk and draw the line all the way across so you have your thirds. You pretty much have your line already for this. So what I need you to do is from that line in the top there that you made, you're going to look at the trunk of the tree. And what shape is that? It's basically a triangle, right? The trunk of the tree is basically a triangle. So it's going to be kind of irrelevant to use this chalk at this point. <laughs> and I just realized that because we're going to be doing white on white. So what we're going to bravely do is we're going to do that triangle with our blue handle paintbrush. So you have a blue handle paintbrush in your kit. 
I'm gonna go into the, okay, so this is super important too. Whenever we're painting, please don't put a lot of paint on your paintbrush. It's easier to add more than to take it away, and especially with black. If you have paint all the way up to the metal part of your paintbrush, like from the, the brush tips all the way to the metal part, that is way too much paint. So um, you should not have that much black ever or any paint on your paintbrush, okay? So just the tip. So I hope you understand what we're doing right now. We're gonna do, I am going to draw a triangle in the third, in this, in this middle section of my painting to represent the trunk of the tree. Now you can use chalk. If you have a pencil, that would really be ideal because you could see the gray pencil on there and you can erase it off. But I don't really think it's that hard to draw a triangle. I don't know if I'm right or wrong on that, but I'm just gonna show you. Little tiny bit of black on my paintbrush. Now I'm drawing the triangle in the second part, in the middle part of my, um, of my painting. So I have that line drawn right there. I want it to be in the middle. I'm using the very tip of my paintbrush. There's two lines you can get out of this. On the tip of your paintbrush, you're gonna get the fine line, right? On the flat of your paintbrush, you're gonna get a broader line. Those are the lines that we're, those are the brush strokes that we're gonna use to do the leaves of the tree. So I'm just using the tip of the paintbrush right now and I am drawing the triangle. Now, I'm using that middle line as a guide because I want it to be symmetrical, right? The same on each side. So I am drawing the triangle using that middle line as a guide. That's where I started it. And then I came down like that. I hope that makes sense. So that middle, where we broke up, drew that line down the middle of the canvas, is going down right in the middle of the trunk of my tree. Aha, uh -huh, get that? <laughs> I hope so. And from there, I'm actually going to paint it in. Because I want you to start seeing some progress. You want to paint it in. When I'm painting it in, I'm using the flat of my paintbrush because I want to get a broader, I want to get more coverage. And this is a little tiny paintbrush though. Black is very, very strong color. Just takes a little bit to get all the coverage you need. And we can always apply a second coat. Acrylic, acrylic paints always look better and better as you build them up. So do you see why it was kind of important that we made sure we placed the tree, the drew the triangle in the center of the painting? Now I'm going to take you about 90% through the painting and then you get to finish it on your own. That's what's fun to me because I give you all the components and then you um, paint yours the way you want to paint it or come close to mine. If you, I don't know if I told you this or not, but if you don't like the reference photo, you can always take a, go down my page and take a screenshot of it and leave it on your phone while you're painting, which is another idea that people like to do. Okay, so I got that triangle drawn, and then I'm gonna give you like three major branches to kind of work off of. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to do the heart at the bottom, and I'm gonna show you how to do some leaves, and then I'm gonna show you how to do those little flowers, and then I'm gonna leave you alone to see what you create. That's exciting, right? Is it exciting, Liza? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait for people to catch up. I want to see if there is there any questions, Liza, from the from the people, from your people, from you, from anywhere else. Anybody texting? Anybody saying anything? What do you got for me? Yeah. So dealing with the painting that you just did, why did you decide that specific painting? What did the colors represent to you? Oh, that's a good question. You guys want to see Liza? Anybody wants to say, see Liza's cute little face? Say <laughs> yes. Okay, Liza, can you just poke your face in? Because you didn't do that in the beginning. This is Liza. Oh, don't knock anything over. I'm going to sell that. Thank you, Liza. <laughs> That's my beautiful daughter, daughter, Liza. She's 16 years old, and she's been helping me um, while school's out and all that. Um, oh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I love this live TV thing. I mean, live whatever. Because it's like so real. It's so authentic. You can't fake this. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Why did you decide to choose this picture? Okay, stop right there. Because that was like a two-part question. So, And I'm waiting for people to get caught up. So. 
Okay, so why did I decide on this painting? Because I wanted to do something that was gender neutral. Trees are always fun to do for men and women. And so I wanted to do something that was kind of significant of the times that we were in, but not like too overbearing, you know? So um, I did the Tree of Life um, a few weeks ago for the Kidney Foundation. I'm gonna show you that at the very, very end of this video. Um, I chose to do it again this time because I thought it really represented kind of everybody's kind of questioning a lot of different things in terms of life and what we're going what's going on um, and the tree of life um, represents connections you know in the branches so many um, branches in the top and in the roots um, just connection right now is a super big deal with the social distancing thing how can we still stay connected I think it's really really important I mean you're probably making more phone calls more texts checking on people we have nothing but time right now isn't that insane like when have we ever had so much time so connections um, are super super important in life in the tree of life and I think at this time right now we should use this time to stay better connected with each other um, I love in the root. If you looked at, you got a little flyer in my um, packet. Um, one of the last pictures is the tree of life. Um, and it's not called the tree of life, it's called at the root. Because at the root of the painting or at the root of everything is love in life, you know? So that's why there's a heart in the in the roots. So there was two parts to that question. What was the other part of the question? Uh, before we proceed, Natalie wants to know, can you please go over the tree again? The tree? Okay, so we broke the canvas into thirds, right? So one third is the ground, there's a middle third, and then there's an upper third. So I have two chalk lines, one chalk line right there and one right there. What we did is we did a small triangle. We drew a triangle, and this triangle is coming out from, okay, remember we got a line down here in the center? It's coming out this way from the center, and it's coming out that way from the center. So it's just a, a, a slender triangle. You can make it fat if you want, or you can make it some other shape if you want, but it's coming out of the center of that line going down and then a line across and then we just painted it in you could chalk it out but it's hard to see because of the white background or if you have a pencil you could pencil it in first because you can always erase and it has to be dry it has to be dry before you use the chalk it has to be dry before you use the pencil um i hope that helped did that help natalie <laughs> she's trying to do it right now yeah. <laughs> Okay. And the other part of the question was, what do the colors represent? Oh, well, I thought it'd be kind of cool to use like the same colors as we used last time. <laughs> and, um, but I thought as I looked at it, that the colors represent love. Red, red represents love. Um, the gray in the background represents the uncertainty of it all, of what we're going through right now, right? That's the gray area. Nobody's clear. Nobody knows what to expect. And the black, the black, remember how I keep talking, talking about how uh, bold black is. I think the black in the painting represents what you know for sure. You know how Oprah says, what I know for sure is um, you should be using your gifts and talents and helping and serving other people. That's what I know for sure. Um, those basic fundamentals of um, purpose, you know, what you're supposed to be doing on this planet. Um, just those basic things of all the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, pa patience, kindness, uh, forgiveness. Um, that's what the black represents in the painting. All those definitive things that we know for certain. Um, so uh, that's pretty deep, huh? I just made that up. Did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of made it up. I've always, I always felt like, you know, I just love the tree of life. It has so many depths to the meaning of it, you know? It's not just a tree with a bunch of roots and a heart at the bottom. So you could use that for your friends when you're describing your painting, your masterpiece to your friends. You could break it down like that, okay? Um, that's called art interpretation. Um, okay, so any questions, guys? Everybody moving along good? Natalie, did she say that helped her? No, she didn't comment. She's probably just trying She's to She's probably do trying to do it. Okay, so. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, when you're resting your brush, by the way, it is getting kind of yucky now. Um, but when you're resting your brush, you should always rest it in the water. It doesn't matter how yucky your water gets, because when you wipe it off on that paper towel, it'll be good to go into another color, okay? So I'm going to go into my black paint right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three major branches uh, for the tree. And then I'm going to do that circle at the bottom for the heart. And um, yeah, we're going, to have, we're going to have some fun with this, okay? Rona says, after looking at this triangle I made, I need something stronger than horns. <laughs> 
Okay, don't be so hard on yourself. That's another thing. Look at my triangle. It doesn't look like anything like spectacular. So anyway, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Three lines coming out. I'm gonna do one line going straight up. One line, I mean one branch, sorry about that. I'm going into my black paint. I'm using the tip of the paintbrush and I'm extending that line out. That's gonna be a major branch in my tree. And then I'm gonna do two lines on each side, two branches. I'm coming down a little bit lower and I'm coming out and I'm just doing one long brush stroke for a branch. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's a tree. So I'm just gonna extend three lines. That's how I'm gonna start the branches of the tree, okay? Just those three lines. Then I'm gonna go down to the back base of the tree. If you look at that reference photo, there's some lines right on the floor, I don't wanna say, on the ground, like some definite lines, like right there. Okay, those are, those are like one, two, three, four, five, pretty important lines, I guess. So if you look at the tree of life, all the little um, leaves, which all the leaves represent all the people in your life, I'd like to say. Um, <laughs> and um, what we're gonna do is, oh, I forgot my train of thought. <laughs> okay, we're gonna draw all the little branches later. Um, and then it, I want you to recognize that all of the leaves are around the branches. That was my point. That's where I was going with that. All the leaves are around the branches because you want to see all the connections in the branches. Okay, so we're going to get to that in a minute. So one, two, three, four, five major lines there. Doug says you skipped me. Tell your mom, me and Misty say hi. And where is Slobberhead and Mr. Will? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who that is, Liza? Hi, Doug. Hi, the Colliers. We miss you guys. You're the best neighbors ever. Well, actually, I have pretty cool neighbors now, too. I didn't mean that in case they're watching, but you guys are really cool. <laughs> I miss you guys. And the boys are at home. The boys aren't with me today. But um, since we got 30 more days of quarantine, I'm thinking the whole family needs to be down here next time. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, I think it'd be fun. We've painted together a few times. It's cool to paint with your family. Um, you know, any experience that you can get your family together on, it's going to be a good one, right? Hopefully. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five lines. One, two, three, four, five lines. Then I'm going to do the circle at the bottom of the tree. Look at the placement of the circle. You can look at it in your reference photo. It's going to start right at the base of the tree. Now, you can do this with your chalk because if you do this with your chalk, you're gonna be able to see it on that gray as opposed to up there. So if you're nervous about making that circle, it's a big circle too. And remember we have that line um, drawn down the middle. You wanna make it symmetrical, meaning that you want it to be kind of the same shape on both sides, okay? So if you're not good at drawing the whole circle, draw a half circle and draw another half circle. But you wanna kind of make it the same, the same uh, shape on each side. Um, if you mess up, or I don't want to say mess up. If you do something you don't like, you can take the blue paper towel and you can wipe it and start over. For those of you who are really adventurous and really confident, you don't even have to use the, um, the chalk and just go ahead and lightly make the circle. And the circle goes all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. I'm kind of sketching it out with my black paint on my paintbrush. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna build up the line with just a little bit of black paint at a time. I'm using the flat of my paintbrush this time. I use the tip to sketch it. I'm using the tip of my paintbrush this time to make a bold line, a bolder um, brush stroke at the bottom. I use the tip of it to kind of clean it up a little bit. Everybody good, Liza? <clears throat> Miss Shelly says, hi, beautiful. Hi, Miss Shelly. You're beautiful. <laughs> thank you. And Doug says, miss you all. Have fun. Aw, thanks, Doug. So I'm painting in the circle a little bit. I want to make the lines a little bit thicker. So that was my point in doing that there. So we good? Hmm. And... Since we're working on the bottom part of the painting, I wanna go ahead and draw the heart. Now you can also use this line right here 
to draw the heart and make it somewhat even on each side. I'm drawing at an angle, so it's really hard to make it. But again, if you draw on that heart and it doesn't look right, you know what you can do? Wipe it off. Wipe it off with your paper towel and start again. So I drew my heart. I'm taking the, the tip of my paintbrush and I'm going right over, right on top of those chalk lines and I'm making the heart. Michonne says, I'm in quarantine. I'm Harry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You, can, you should paint with us next time, Michelle. I know it's cold there too. It was beautiful in Las Vegas today, like 80 degrees. Beautiful day. Beautiful day for painting outside. Okay, so what I just did right there is I painted my heart in there. How we doing? It's coming alive, people. It doesn't quite look like it yet, but it's coming alive. I promise you. I wish I could have music. I was gonna sing. I was gonna sing like this little light of mine because that's like a cute uplifting song that I thought everybody could get into. And I was like, what if they take my video down for that? That would kind of suck. So anyway. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Liza's like, please. But anyway. Okay, another question, Liza, while everybody's working on their heart and catching up. What advice do you have for up and coming artists? We could ask that every single time, huh? What advice do I have for up and coming artists? I'm self taught and um, I did work for a super famous artist. Her name is Miss Annie Lee and she and Kurt was Miss Annie Lee. And she really inspired me because she's the first person I saw use their gifts and talents and be like a millionaire. Um, what advice I have for other um, artists is to just be confident in your gift and keep working on it and you'll get better and better. So that's the best advice. Like stop looking at other people's stuff and comparing yourself with other people's art and just there's space, there's room for you. Like isn't there a Bible verse or something that says your, your gifts will make room for you? Um, if you just keep working on it, I believe that God is just so happy and um, that everything you do um, will work out for, for the better good. So just keep working on it and stop looking at the next guy and paint what you love to paint, basically. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five lines, a circle, and a heart. That's all we did so far. Cool, right? <laughs> so now we're going to work on all these connecting lines. Um, yeah, so now we're going to work on these connecting lines. Now, the way that when I was painting this, when I was coming out with this image, when I started connecting the branches, I just whimsically started doing it, to be honest with you. I started in the middle of every branch, and I just did one out, going outward. Um, if you look, if you're trying to make this kind of brush stroke, you're going to apply more pressure in the beginning, and then you're going to lighten up at the end. It could be the same uh, brush stroke. It doesn't have to be all fancy and swirly at the end. And maybe you can't get that effect and maybe you just add it at the end, like a light, <laughs> a light brush stroke at the end. But really it's applying more pressure in the beginning and then lighting, lightening up at the end of the brush stroke. So what I want you to do right now is just have fun making some connecting uh, brush strokes. And what I did was I always started from like when there's a long line, I started from the middle and I did outward. Every time when I found a space, I would just go uh, extend the line just the furthest place that I could. Now, if you really are looking at the, at the reference photo, you're going to have a hard time like emulating every single line. So just kind of don't worry about it right now. Just make them connect cross over, um, use the tip of your paintbrush, use the, just have fun with how the paint is flowing, um, paying attention to how um, each effect when you pressed harder on the paintbrush, when you lightened up. 
And if you notice, like these two lines that we made right there are like my boundary lines. I'm not going past those with the connection. So just kind of have fun with it. So I'm just doing lines and lines and lines. And you want to have a lot of lines because it's the tree of life. And the tree of life is about connection. Right? Some are crossing over, some are going up, some are going down. But these boundaries down there, I'm kind of, I'm not going below there. Okay, I'm doing that kind of fast and then I'm going to go down to the roots and since I have black on my paintbrush, I'm going to draw, I'm just going to all willy-nilly starting from the center. Is that willy-nilly? Is that an art term? It is today. <laughs> just right from the center, from the circle and I'm just going to do some brush strokes coming out. Hester says Proverbs 8, 6, 18, 16 is the verse. Oh, and that your gifts will make room for you, Hester. And Jeremy Clark says, "I love you, cause still a motivator." Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Okay, I love the power of the internet. You know who Jeremy is? That's Aunt Pat's Aunt Pat's grandbaby <laughs> from Michigan. Diana, Diane's son. So I'm putting brush strokes down here. Actually, I went a little too far, but there are no mistakes, so <laughs> I was just having a good time with it. So, hmm, what do you guys think? Looks like a scary Halloween tree, but it's about to come to life. So I hope you are with me. I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm not drinking as much wine this time. I don't usually drink and paint. I don't know what I was thinking last time. I was just like having a good time with the music and all that. I want your paintings to look good. I can't wait to see them. Okay, so I'm pretty much done working with um, the black right now. So I hope I'm not going too fast for you. But I'm gonna show you two more things because we've been painting for like 45 minutes or so. I'm going to show you two more things and then I'm going to leave you alone. Can you believe that? Dun, 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 dun. How are they doing, Liza? Quiet. <laughs> I'm going to wait for, um, I'm going to see if you have any more questions. Or Liza, you have a question? Do you have one more question? Why everybody's catching up? So how exactly did you discover your gift? And did you have any like Ooh. setbacks from it? Okay, that's deep. She asked me, how did I discover my gift? People ask me that all the time. But your gift is something that you do at a high level with a very least amount of effort. It just comes like natural to you. That's your gift. And it, sometimes it's not as obvious as like painting or something. Maybe it's your connection with people, the way you relate to people, the way you braid hair, or the way you wash a car, or the way you bake a cake. And it's effortless to you, but and it's not a big deal to you. But you know, you've probably heard that definition before because I've heard that definition a million times. But um, God kind of um, gives you a little wink and letting you know. I mean, there's certain things that come up, and He tries to single uh, give you signals, and those signals are compliments. So whenever somebody compliments you over and over again about the same thing, you need to step, take a look back and say, oh, that's my gift, and own it. And say, okay, I'm pretty good at this or that. And then start working on it. So um, for me, I don't know, as a little kid, I always drew coloring book. I didn't color the pictures in the coloring book, I just drew the pictures out of the coloring book. But nobody could see the value in that. And when I started working um, with different artists, um, as I work with Annie Lee, and I noticed that most artists don't come with the, up with the total ideas by themselves. They alter different images. So my gift of being able to recreate anything, if I just tweaked it a couple things, then it's mine. So most artists come up with things they have, they're inspired by different things that help them create. So, um, and then I just kept trying to get better and kept trying to get better and I'm still trying to get better. So 
That's how you discover your gift. That was deep. Y'all thought we was just painting today, huh? That was deep. Okay, look. <laughs> okay, I have my paintbrush in my water. It's about to get kind of yucky because I'm going to squish it around. And I'm going to get all that black paint out of there. As best as I can. Then I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel. And I'm going to pay attention to my brush. I'm not just going to wiggle the, 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 the paintbrush all around on here. I want the bristles to stay flat, so I'm wiping it off so that the plate bristle, the bristle, to respect the the brush, okay? Respect the brush. It's the only one you have right now. So, <laughs> so I'm carefully wiping it off. Now I'm going into the red. And I'm going to put the first coat of red on my heart. Now it's already outlined, so we're going to just fill it in. I like telling people, just imagine it as a, like a, it's, it's like a crayon. But we're, it's like coloring. But we're using paint. Karen Gray says, hi, Angelique. Hi, Karen. You should be painting with us. Maybe next time, right? You and your son. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe next time. I got two new two paintings I'm doing next week. We're going to do a painting on Friday and Saturday. I'm challenging myself. So I'm going to post both those paintings on Monday. So you can do a painting for 15 bucks. You get the kit. Or you can do both of them for like 25. That would be cool, huh? I'm trying to kill myself. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm trying to challenge myself. <laughs> don't stick, don't make me stick to that. I might change it because that is kind of cheap. But anyway, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think I need to do that. $15 is very reasonable, I think. Okay, so that's the heart. I'm gonna put another coat on the heart. So I just filled the card in. Okay, the leaves. I'm going to show you how to do the leaves now, and then, um, uh, let's see, we got 10 more minutes. I'm going to show you how to do those little flowers that you saw at the bottom of there, and then the white highlights are last. The white highlights are the absolute last thing we're going to do once the painting dries. Now, the reason why I'm not going to take you through this the entire painting, because the technique is like repeated over and over and over and over and over again, and it would just be boring, and yeah, I think you're going to get this pretty easily. So with the red paint, I'm going into the red because I have red on my paintbrush because I did the heart. The reason I did the heart first is because I want it to dry as I go around with the first layer of leaves. Then I'm going to put another coat of red on my heart. So what I'm doing for the leaves is I'm just using the flat of the paintbrush and I'm just randomly placing brush strokes around the edge of the tree if you look at your reference photo, photo, they're not in the middle. You can put them in the middle if you want, but it really is not going to be a tree of life because in the tree of life, you really want to see the connection. So I'm going around the tree right now, and I'm just I'm turning my paintbrush every which way. I'm not just I'm just turning it every which way, making leaves, and it will take you quite a long time. Okay. So I'm going to work on one area of my tree, just to show you guys how it looks. And you can put a heavy amount of paint on your paintbrush at this point, if you want. And those leaves come pretty far down. You can even put them all the way to the ground if you want. They're not overlapping. Some of them are overlapping, but most of, most of them have a little gap in between them. It's kind of hard for me to paint on an angle, but I think you get the gist of it. And then once I work my way around that painting, I'm going to put another coat of red on my heart down here. Now, if you look at the leaves in the tree, you've got to have not a lot of leaves. This is not enough leaves. Please don't send me pictures of your tree like this. Looking like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree, right? <laughs> I really need a lot of leaves on here for you to get that effect, okay? So I want you to work on that. I'm gonna leave you in a minute here. Yes, I am. Now, if you look at the tree um, in your reference photo, there are also pink. And you know how you're gonna make pink? You're going to take a little bit of your white paint, put in your mixing tray, and then you're gonna mix a little bit of red with it using your same paintbrush. 
that you've been painting red with, and then you're gonna make pink with a little bit of white. And that's gonna be the second layer. But what I want you to do, I want you to work your way, filling your tree up with red, then I want you to go around and I want you to put the pink, add the pink leaves in there. But do your red first all the way around, let it dry a little bit, then add your pink. You want those branches to be a little dry, you want those branches to be dry too. I'm getting black in there. I don't really want black in there. So I'm gonna work this corner a little bit. And make sure when you're filling out those leaves that you go all the way to the corner and really fill up leaves. Okay, so work your way all around with the red, work your way all around with the pink, and then I want to show you how to make a flower at the bottom. I don't know if you can see in your reference photo, there's little tiny flowers going along the bottom. And what we did, is, what I did is I used, um, the center is red, I used the back of my paintbrush and I dipped it right into, this gets messy, so save this for last. I dipped it into my red paint and then you're just gonna put a little dot for your flowers. So you're gonna work your way all around your painting with red, then you're gonna work away around with all the leaves and pink, and then you're gonna do these little dots so you can make your flowers. And you don't have to have a lot, you can have a few, but those represent the middle of your flowers. Okay? So again, you're going to work your way all around that tree with those leaves in red. Then you're going to work your way all around that tree in pink. Then you're going to draw those little tiny dots down there for your um, flowers. And then the very last step that we're going to do is we're going to add white. The white's going to bring you all the highlights. So I'm going to work a little bit and try to fill my tree up because I got a little bit of time and I can do it fast. So I'm just going really quick around the tree. Don't stress out about where they're marked at, where they're at. Extending those leaves all the way to the corner. I don't want any space showing. It almost got through my piece. <laughs> okay. Turning my brush different ways for the leaves. Doing it quickly, not stressing out where I'm placing them. You see it coming to life, people? I hope you do. I always tell people at the parties to take pictures. You're gonna be shocked and amazed at your masterpiece. Right? There are no mistakes, only compliments to your neighbor. When you're doing art, it makes you, um, see I'm even putting leaves on the side because I think that's cool when you look at a painting and it's like totally wrapped around the sides. See how it's coming to life? The more leaves you put on it, the better and better it looks. See that? That's all just red. And then I'm gonna work my way around the tree with a little bit of um, pink because that gives a little contrast and gives a little texture to the painting. Makes them kind of look like leaves a little bit more. I said I was gonna leave you hanging, but I couldn't do it. I just wanted to do more. I'm just doing it really fast. Don't even try to keep up with me. The tree of life coming to life. You see it coming to life? I love it. I get all excited, I'm sorry. I hope it's not too corny. <laughs> okay, again, I'm painting on the angle. I'm trying to make sure that sides are the same. It doesn't really matter, it's a tree. All trees are different, keep that in mind, okay? So, I really would spend more time with this, but for the sake of live TV, you know, it's not like on um, the cooking shows, like I could bring out the finished one and just, you know, call it a day. 
I want to make sure that you know all the steps that you need to finish. The very last color that I'm going to use is white. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the, the, the tip of my paintbrush. And I'm going to work on the roots a little bit. If you look in your reference photo, there's some highlights in the roots. And the reason why I'm starting here is because this part really needs to dry before I put white highlights on it. Now, if I'm going too fast, remember, like, I'm not playing any music. You're going to be able to watch the replay of this. So when I sign off, you could go back and watch the replay and learn about, like, how to make the leaves on the tree or where the white highlights went. So don't stress out. This is a relaxing experience. Don't stress out, okay? <laughs> All right, so... I'm just putting some highlights because these lines are dry. Now, I know you're probably looking at this painting thinking, there's a lot more going on in that heart. And there is. Um, what you can do is you can chalk those lines out, like just use the um, reference photo and chalk them out, or you can just do them yourself with the black. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to do them. We already put two coats of red on that heart, so I'm cool with that. Liza, how you doing over there? Any comments? Mm -mm. <laughs> Everybody's like, this is the part in the paint party where I always say, y'all getting serious, because nobody has anything to say. But anyway, okay. So now, once your red dries, once your pink dries, you're going to take a little bit of white and put some white highlights in your leaves. Just putting white, because you want to wait for it to dry, because the white really makes it stand out, and you don't want it to be pink. You want it to be white. A little white here and there. And then for the little flowers at the bottom, I'm just using the corner of my paintbrush, and I'm pressing down around the flowers, and that's going to represent petals. So you're just pressing down around those little leaves. You might have to wash your paintbrush off a little because mine are getting kind of pink. But when you press down around it, you'll see what I mean. I'm just using the tip of my paintbrush and I'm getting flowers. Isn't that cool? So that is the tree of life. Um, I like to stop with white. I like to use white as a final color. Um, the details in the heart. I really want that to be dry before I work on that. So you can take your um, chalk and kind of chalk out those lines first. Like this line goes all the way down and then this line goes all the way down. If you just follow the curve of the heart, you can get that crisscross effect. And then those other lines at the top are just kind of randomly connecting. So I usually wait and use white is usually my very last color, but I wanted to make sure that that um, heart was really dry. Because if you smear that black in there, it just won't look that good. So I'm just following the lines of the heart all the way down. Again, you can chalk it first if you're not comfortable. And then at the top, there's just some random lines going straight down. And look at that, our tree of life is complete. Just like that. Do not forget to sign your painting somewhere on the back with the date or, or something. Somebody's gonna be fighting over this masterpiece one day. This is a represent, representation of who you are in this moment. That's what art is. Um, um, it's important. So even if you don't like it, um, somebody else is gonna find it very valuable one day. It looks a lot different tomorrow once the painting dries. Um, it actually cures, the paint cures. Um, so it's gonna look a lot different tomorrow. It just like, just fills my spirit so much when people send me pictures and say, um, you know, it reminded them of when they were here and how much fun they had and all that good stuff. So it is your masterpiece, own it, feel good about it, okay? Um, if I had more time, I'd add more leaves, I'd do some more white highlights, but you got the basics of how to complete this painting. You have everything you need. If you want to put like a glossy finish on your painting, we talked about that last 
time, once it's totally dry, like tomorrow evening or even the next day, you can buy this Mod Podge stuff. Um, it's really cool because it um, puts, it says gloss underneath it and it gives a nice finish. All you do is paint it on. You, probably, you need another sponge brush or a bigger brush and you paint it on here, it gets a nice glossy finish to the painting. If you, you know how I said that practice makes perfect, you might wanna try to paint this tree again and use some other colors. I'll show you my tree of life that I did for the kidney foundation. Uh, right here, pretty cool. Lots of fun, fun colors in it. So just to give you an idea of um, if you wanna get more creative with it and kinda make another tree of life with your friends or um, just on your own. There's just so much that you could do with it. So we have been rolling for an hour. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time. Um, I hope you paint with me again next week. Uh, follow me on Facebook or check out my Facebook page on Monday. I'll be posting the upcoming paintings. They're going to be different. I mean, I'm coming out with some um, different things that we haven't painted before. I'm just trying to add a little twist to things. So, um, Thank you again. Thank you so much. Liza, you want to say bye before you sign off? <laughs> Anybody want to say anything?